Number 32. The following ionic compounds are found in common household products. Name each of the compounds. Then we have A through F. Okie dokie. All right, so they're telling us that they're all going to be ionic compounds. So we basically just have to figure out whether um, the metal is a main group metal or a transition metal. And I say metal because ionic compounds, majority of the time, is always going to be a metal plus a nonmetal or a metal plus a polyatomic ion. All right? So remember where your main groups and where your transition metals are, right? So we have our main group metals here and here. So these are your main group groups, basically. So one and two, and then 13 all the way to 18. And then your transition metals are going to be from three to 12. So transition. There are exceptions, but if we do find exceptions in this uh, question, I'll let you guys know, all right? Because there's always exceptions in chemistry. There's just so many. <laughs> but anyway, just know that main group metals, you do not need a Roman numeral. You just need the metal name, and then the non-metal gets the IDE ending. And then for your transitions, you need a metal name, the Roman numeral, and then the non-metal IDE ending. All right, so let's get down to it. A, Ca, H2, PO4, 2. All right, well, calcium is here, right? That's Ca, and calcium's over here. It's part of the main group atom, right? So I don't need a Roman numeral, so I just state the metal name, and then I just give the non-metal IDE ending, or if it's a polyatomic, polyatomic names stay exactly the same. So I'm going to put that over here. Polyatomic names, mames, <laughs> polyatomic names stay the same. Okay. So let's see. Calcium would just be calcium. And now I have H3PO4. That's not just one atom that can be found on here which means that I, it's basically a polyatomic ion. And that's when you have to either memorize your polyatomic ions, or maybe your teacher or professor may give them to you on quizzes or tests, but it's good to memorize them. It's just quicker that way. You could use flashcards. You can write them down over and over again. Me personally, I used flashcards, I believe, when I was learning this. But I also wrote down a lot of stuff, especially for organic chemistry, but... Stay tuned for when we do our chemistry. But anyway, um, one of your polyatomics that you should memorize is the dihydrogen phosphate, which is H2PO4 with the minus one charge. And here it is. It's right here, H2PO4. So the polyatomic names will always stay the same. So H2PO4 as a whole is just going to be dihydrogen phosphate. And that's it. This would just be calcium dihydrogen phosphate. For metals that are in the main group, I don't care how many of each I have. I just state the metal name and then either the polyatomic or the nonmetal with the IDE ending. So this would be calcium dihydrogen uh, phosphate. Okie dokie. That gets rid of A. Moving on. B. What do we got? We got Fe. SO4. All right, so we start with the metal. Fe is iron, and iron is over here, and that's a transition metal. So what does that mean? That means that we need that Roman numeral. But the metal name stays exactly the same, so this would be iron. Roman numeral, and then I have this whole jazz, right? I have SO, or technically I could have SO4. Which one is it? Well, it's a combination of sulfur and oxygen, which means that it has to be a polyatomic. So enter in sulfate. Sulfate is SO4 with the two minus charge. So this whole thing, SO4, would be the polyatomic. And that goes at the end, sulfate. So I know that I got basically 75% right, technically, roughly around, right? It's iron something sulfate. Now I just have to find out what the Roman numeral is. 
And the Roman numeral is always going to be the oxidation state or the charge of the metal. So how do we find the charge of the metal? Pretty simple. You always take the subscripts that you have and crisscross them back up. So just like these charges were, you know, in the beginning they were in the top right corner and you crisscross them down. Here now we take the subscripts and we crisscross them back up to find out what the charges were. So how many irons were there? There was one iron and how many total sulfates there were? There was only one because this four is part of the sulfate, right? It's right here. So that is what you would use to crisscross. So the one crisscrosses up to sulfate telling me that sulfate was a minus one and this one crisscrosses back up to tell me that iron was a plus one. So we're at here, we're at iron plus one and SO4 minus one. Always double check your negatives to make sure that they make sense. But in this case, sulfate is always going to be a negative two. But in our situation, it's a negative one, which means that it was simplified. So we have to unsimplify it by multiplication. How do I get to the negative two? You times by two to get to the negative two. But you got to be fair. If you do that for the anion, you got to do it for the cation as well. So times this by two. And now iron was a plus two. And that's the number that goes in the Roman numeral. So this one would be iron two sulfate. Iron two sulfate. And that's the answer for B. Now I'm just going to clean this up a little bit just so that I have more room so that we can move on. We're moving on to C. So let's see, we have C, CaCO3. So once again, we're talking about calcium, right? And calcium is a main group metal. And in that case, we don't need a Roman numeral. We just have to state the metal name. So this would be calcium. And then either state the non-metal or the polyatomic. And here I have carbon and oxygen. Or it could be carbon, oxygen, and with three oxygens, right? Which one is it? Well, it's definitely a polyatomic. And carbonate is CO3. So you do include the three as part of the polyatomic. So this whole thing would be carbonate. No Roman numeral necessary here. So this would just be the answer, calcium carbonate. So that's what C is, calcium carbonate. Okay. D, MgO. Mg is magnesium. Magnesium is over here. It's a main group uh, metal. So we don't need a Roman numeral. We just got to state the metal and then the non-metal or polyatomic. But this is magnesium. Okay. And now we just have oxygen. This is not a polyatomic because it's not like a mix with nitrogen or sulfur or carbon. It's just oxygen. So oxygen would turn into oxide. And that would be the answer for this one. It would just be magnesium oxide. And that's the answer for D. Let's keep going. We got two more. This one's pretty fun. What do you guys think though? Hopefully, hopefully this is getting easier for you guys. E, N-A-N-O-2. Well, I see that I have sodium here and sodium is a main group metal, right? So that means that I just have to state the metal. So it would just be sodium. And now I see that I have nitrogen with oxygen or maybe it's nitrogen with two oxygens. This would come from recognizing polyatomic ions. And look over here, nitrite is NO2 with the minus one charge. And there it is, NO2. So this would just be the polyatomic nitrite. And that's the end for this one, no Roman numeral because sodium is not a transition metal. So this one would just be sodium nitrite. And that gets rid of E. And then last but not least, we have F, K-I. K is potassium. It's also a main group metal, so I don't need a Roman numeral. I just state the metal, so this would, would be potassium. And iodine 
is I, right? And it's not a polyatomic. It's coming from the periodic table. It's over here. So iodine would turn into iodide. So iodide, because you need the I-D-E ending. So that's K-I, potassium iodide. And that's it. And 32 is done. Guys, what do you think? Hopefully this is getting much more simpler, especially if you've done the, I think we've done nine questions like this so far. So if you've guys done all of these, which I highly recommend, um, you'll be golden for your test quizzes or homeworks or whatever is coming up for you guys. So thank you for tuning in. Let me know what you think in the comments. If this helped you at all, click the like button, subscribe to the channel. It will help us greatly. And I thank you so much for that. I'll see you guys all in the next question. See ya.